you are on the record as saying that diversity is a weakness. So is this a weak? Is do you this not a weak follow country? international politics at all? You, you've got to show some respect. No, you asked me a question. Yeah. Have a sense of humor about yourself. Are you saying that, let's say that we did want to do that, which we didn't, are you saying the Maoris can't have any sense of humor about themselves? That seems kind of racist. Are you serious? Welcome back to Rattlesnake TV, guys. In this video, we are going to be breaking down a debate between Lauren Southern and Stefan Molyneux and a woke New Zealand journalist named Patrick Gower. This one was sent into the Rattlesnake TV Telegram group by Rudy. Now, I don't know too much about these guys. I do remember when Lauren Southern said she identified as an attack helicopter. Pretty iconic moment. I actually identify so as an attack like, helicopter, so, me, so it's really offensive. Like but the reason why I love this debate is because it shows just how pathetically woke New Zealand can be. And also, how quickly their brittle ideologue journalists unravel when confronted with a triple digit IQ. So we're gonna be exploring a little bit of identity politics happening in that part of the world, including my country, Australia. And just for a little bit of context, this interview was taking place after their speaking event in Auckland was canceled due to the venue being scared of the hurty feeling. Let's get into is it. it. Is it perhaps as simple as this, that as soon as it went public, so many people who are critical of what they say is hate speech. That's what they say that, that, that you're responsible for. Just contacted him and he agreed with them and pulled the pin on you. To call it just critical is a little ridiculous considering there were events planned saying they were planning on attacking fascists. So it wasn't just critical, it's people that they don't want open inquiry, they don't want free speech, they don't want questions asked, they want to quite frankly shut down events that disagree with the popular opinion or not even the popular opinion, just their opinion. And it's it's very scary, especially when they call people like Stefan and I Nazis. To call someone a Nazi when they have no demonstrable evidence for it is to say we are genocidal individuals and of course that's going to cause a ruckus of course that's going to cause riots yeah but aren't you overstating this aren't you sort of picking out one or a small element of people that are referred to you as nazis when what you've got is actually a large stream of opinion that thinks you're responsible for hate speech absolutely you know? not true no, you've got to disassociate yourself from what goes on in the media and in radical groups from the majority of people. The majority of the reception we got in Australia was very positive. We had tough questions in the Q&A, which we welcome. We went out to try and talk to protesters because I want to hear what they have to say. I'm into free speech. I want a public debate. So we went out, yeah. let me finish. We went out talking to the protesters saying, hey, what is it that we're missing? What is it that you'd like to tell us? More than that, there's polling that has been done in this country where over, I believe, when I checked last, it was around 70% of people here agreed we should have the right to speak. So there is this radical minority that want to decide what the majority of people should think yeah. is hate speech and should be shut down. Well, well, what people say is hate speech is when you say that diversity is a weakness. Right, and the suffragettes the would have been considered against the modern... Uh, status quo at the time. Individuals who criticized Christianity hundreds of years ago would have been prosecuted under blasphemy laws. I now criticize the religion of diversity and I'm considered but committing what, what, hate speech because that is the popular culture at the well, time. Well, what I say to you, Lauren Southern, is that New Zealand is a diverse country. You say diversity is a weakness. This country is known as a melting pot. Are, are you saying we're a weak country? Will you accept the diverse view that women should be stoned for the crime of being Answer the question. Will you accept the diversity no, that women should be stoned for the crime of being Because that's what multiculturalism is. You accept all cultures. The question here is... You accept people of all diverse opinions. Is that a view that you believe should be included in this diversity? You're not answering the question. Yes, I am. I'm answering no. it by asking you, no. is diversity really a strength if you have to bring in views that are anti-women, views that are anti-democracy, views that are anti-free speech, views that go against everything that has created the most beautiful culture in the world, the West? The question was... New Zealand is a diverse country. We're known as a melting pot. Many people here are very proud of that. You are on the record as saying that diversity is a weakness. So is this a weak, is do you this not a weak follow country? international politics at all? Do you know who else has said diversity is a weakness and multiculturalism has failed? It's Angela Merkel of Germany. She said this many years ago. Is she? This is an interview. Would you say that she's a purveyor of hate speech okay. or questioning the cult of diversity? Well, 
Okay, if you don't want to answer that question. Why on earth are they saying diversity isn't a strength? Jacinda Ardern has been telling me diversity is a strength, so it must be right. Me and all my friends on the TV always say diversity is a strength and no one ever challenges us. Why does these people have different opinions and thoughts to my opinions and thoughts? I don't like this diversity. In case you weren't aware, guys, New Zealand was run by the smiling, woke authoritarian Jacinda Ardern for a number of years before she eventually quit when she knew she was about to lose an election. And I won't go into her policies, but she was a genuine tyrant throughout COVID. She was terrible on race and identity politics and also a young leader of the World Economic Forum. Make of that what you will. And all this woke diversity, I'm sure it was a great thing for the country, right? Well, let's look at what happened when Posey Parker came to New Zealand to speak about women's sports. Posey being a feminist that actually has the courage to speak about real life issues that women are facing, such as blokes with penises in their sports and what it actually means to fundamentally be a woman. All that diversity, right? Such a strength. And just to move on, guys, I have to share this with you. Australia can be very woke itself, but I genuinely think my country is starting to turn it around a little bit and is starting to wake up. And what it's taken is a totally useless referendum fueled by racial politics that is supposedly meant to help the indigenous people that was actually brought about by white leftists that sought to change our constitution forever. Whilst there are real, endemic issues happening with the indigenous communities that they do not want to talk about. Check out these numbers. It's so embarrassing for them, but so satisfying. So here you have the result, guys. And all of this orange means all of the people who voted against this referendum. And then all the way down here, you can see the one state, ACT, which is where Canberra is, which is where our capital city is, is the only one that voted in favor of it. And according to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, Northern Territory has a nearly 31% indigenous population. And you can see that they voted overwhelmingly against it. And then you can see the states that voted most for this referendum was ACT, our work capital, with 2.1% indigenous population. And then Victoria, with a whopping 1.2% indigenous population. So what this tells us guys, is that it's all the white city dwelling woke progressives that voted in favor of this. And I get that there are many people who wouldn't really know what they're talking about, think they're doing something nice for indigenous people. But then there are those people who have never talked to a black person in their life and they would cross the street if they saw one that are so self-satisfied with their virtue signaling. These are the people who are at the rallies and posting it on their Instagram stories, how much they're looking out for the oppressed minorities. Isn't it just hilarious to see how this phenomenon of fart sniffing white progressives happens cross-culturally in Western countries? <laughs> And now onto the next part where it highlights honestly just how pathetic being woke is. Let's talk about what you've been saying, which is that some races are genetically weaker than others. Never said that. Well, what, what, what do you say then? Give, give well, me your, give me your words. Say. No, it's give not me, what give, I say. Give me no, your that's words. Fair, that's fair. Give me your words then. It's not what I say. This is the most established metric in social sciences IQ. If there's no valid test of intelligence called IQ, then there's no such thing as a social sciences at all. IQ, on average, is different between various ethnicities. On average, you don't judge individuals, of course, and it's not a matter of superior or inferior, it's just a matter of difference. This is well established, it is scientifically backed up by over 100 years of testing. Uh, Jordan Peterson has talked about it. I've had the, the editor of the intelligence, a magazine intelligence, Dr. Richard Howell. So, Hang on, let me finish. You yeah. asked me the question. Let yeah. me finish yeah. answering. I'm just, so, trying, let me, I'm, let me, I'm just trying to figure out yeah, what... Let me finish the question and then yeah. you, know, you can ask me another one. 
so this is very, very well established. Now, this is very important to talk about because as we have more and more of a multiracial society, the IQ tests and the difference that various ethnicities test on that IQ test is highly predictive of how various races are going to do. So you're going to have East Asians who are going to have very high incomes and very high success rates in, in yeah. academics. Let me finish. No, and no, I mean, you have, I mean, you have whites further down, you I'm, have I'm Hispanics gonna, a little further down, then you have blacks a little I'm, bit further down on average. I'm going to now, interrupt the, you here. Yeah, I'm going to interrupt you. You've got to, you've, you, you've got to show some respect. No, you asked me a question. Yeah. So yeah, am yeah. I allowed to? Uh, you, you, you blamed her for not answering a question. Now you're mad at me for answering a question. <laughs> Do you want to pick a side here? Can I fin let me finish very no, briefly? No. Ten seconds. No, 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 ten no, seconds? no, 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 I'm not going to let you finish. Okay. Fair okay, so, so last, just so everyone's no, I'm not, clear, he asked me a question, now he doesn't want me to answer yeah, it. I'm not okay. going to let you. Guys, if you enjoy these videos and if you like getting a bit of a look at other parts of the world and how wokeness is infiltrating those cultures, then make sure to hit the like button, show me that you appreciate it. And also, if you want to subscribe to the channel, you can hit that big red button. Back to the clips. I'm let you finish. What I am going to ask you is last night you came into New Zealand, you stood under a Maori symbol. Um, many New Zealanders thought that what you were doing there was ridiculing. What, uh, oh, because we made the funny action hero funny poses? poses. What, what, After a man tweeted us that this what, gate was going to be a sign that we couldn't enter the country, of course we're going to troll your press. They've been very silly. This had nothing to do with, <laughs> with disrespecting a native culture. Somebody just said it's impossible for them to walk through, so we pretended to be pushing our way through. It was just a joke. It was just a joke. Oh, it's not, no, no so disrespect. I know you guys don't understand what humor is anymore in the media, but it's if we have to explain the joke, it's a little less funny. So that's that's so, why you're not laughing, I suppose. Well, what was the joke? The joke was oh, oh that we so, gonna, you here's can't the joke. Explain a no, joke. So the joke is somebody had tweeted that this was a force field we couldn't get through, so we pretended to be pushing as if it was a force field we couldn't get through because that was a joke that was made. Can you not see after your comments in Australia about the indigenous people that some people would see what you did last night as a sign of disrespect? Either no. way, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. People have come and they want to hear us speak. They want to hear our opinions. We should have the right, even if we were intentionally trying to be disrespectful, which we were not, we should have the right to in a free country. If New Zealand respects different opinions, if they respect true diversity of different opinions, uh, as you say is such a great, wonderful thing, then it should be no problem that we bring in our opinions that you find offensive. Well, let me ask you this too. If somebody made fun of, you know, like some of the tropes, like white men can't jump or whites are bad at dancing and so on, let's say somebody made that joke. The idea that I would be so offended that I'd like faint and, and get angry and tweet. I mean, have a sense of humor about yourself. Are you saying that, let's say that we did want to do that, which we didn't. Are you saying the Maoris can't have any sense of humor about themselves? That seems kind of racist. Are you serious? I am serious. Are you saying that whites can take jokes about themselves, but other races can't? No, all I was doing and my question was, can you not see that some people might find doing that after what you said about Indigenous people in Australia offensive? I have no idea how to answer I mean, that question. I can't mind some read people, people in New Zealand. Some yeah, people yeah. are offended by everything. Some people were offended by women getting the right to vote. Some people are offended by jokes about the gender. Some people walk out of comedy shows. What does it matter? Why is this question relevant to the fact that our free speech has been shut down in your country? You were offended by me giving a scientific answer to a question you asked. No, I wasn't offended by you giving a scientific answer. I was offended by you going off on a rant rather than just asking a question. A rant? What do you yeah. mean? A oh, rant. so if it's an answer you don't like, it's a rant? No, no, it's, no. You know, it didn't matter whether I liked it or not. I asked you a pretty basic question. You then embarked on, you know, in New Zealand vernacular, a rant. And I got in because I was thinking of the audience and I just wanted to stop you. Oh, from doing trust that. me, the audience is very interested in what we have to say. That's why we sold that event. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you speaking on behalf of the audience may not be valid. No, I was just sort of mon monitoring and moderating things on behalf of the audience. Okay. Is that okay? It's your show, man. Yeah, exactly. Where to even begin with that one? So first of all, the interviewer cuts him off when he's laying out statistics about IQ, which, shocker guys, they're true. Not all people are equal in all fields. I know, it's so sad. I also wish that the communist utopia where we all have the same haircut and wear the same uniforms and have the same food rations and get the same wages and have the same thoughts and listen to the same North Korean propaganda music was true. I too yearn for that reality, just like you guys. And then he goes on to put multiple exclamation marks on why being woke is such a miserable existence by showing just how allergic he is to a sense of humor by bringing up this photo 
where Lauren and Stefan are clearly making a joke and trolling people who said that they would not be able to get into the country. That is objectively funny. And then the shock in his voice when Stefan says that Maori people can also take a joke, as if he can't conceptualize in his white progressive mind that people of color can also have a sense of humor. And this just goes to show that he's definitely in a progressive echo chamber and most definitely has a white savior complex. And anybody who's been around the world and has friends from different cultures and different parts of the world will know that race jokes and culture jokes are just commonplace. When you go to places that aren't saturated by woke identity politics, this is just the norm. But what this man's argument essentially boils down to is you said things that offended people. And honestly, I wonder how you can be a journalist and have this train of thought. How can you embark on a career that is aimed towards finding the truth and uncovering stories and narratives and going off the beaten path? And then you can arrive at a place where you can say, but people were offended without giving any thoughtful counterpoints. How can you not see how much of a bad look that is? And honestly, this is accentuated in the next part when they go on to have just the most rudimentary philosophical discussion about choice and contracts and just watch how far out of his depths he becomes. So in terms of that, is it not fair um, for people in New Zealand to oppose you? Is it not fair for the Mayor of Auckland, who's elected, to stop you coming from venues which, in effect, he's in control of? And is it not fair um, for today's venue owner to decide not to have you there? No, that, neither of us have that, disagreed but, with the fact that people can oppose us. In fact, we welcome it. Yeah, we have an open yeah. Q&A at our events. I've gone out to speak with protesters at my events. I'm so the, the open inquiry is what has made the West the greatest civilization in existence because we are able to come to the greatest conclusion yeah. by debating all ideas. So if we get to that open inquiry, I mean, this idea of that, it's simple, isn't it? You can't find a place people are free to stop you from going into their venues. People are free to oppose. No, no, see, now, if you but, say, you know, because well, we had paid and we had an agreement with the guy. Yeah. Now, you wouldn't like it if the bank phoned you up no, and said, hang on, let me finish. Yeah. You wouldn't like it if the bank phoned you up and said, hey, Patrick, we found a better price for your home, so we're kicking you out tomorrow. And you'd say, well, no, no, we have a we have a deal. We've signed, yeah. we have a deal, right? And, so, you're, and, and you're welcome to go away and enforce that contract. You are absolutely welcome to go away under New Zealand law and enforce that contract if there is one. But still, you know, that's a choice that's been made. I don't understand what you mean. It's, yeah. it's a choice, sure. That doesn't mean it's the right choice. It's yeah. a choice, great. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can so? have a choice to, you know, you, <laughs> yeah. could choi you could choose to kick a homeless man. That doesn't mean that it's right. <laughs> yeah, but that's a straw man argument that you're putting up there. The contract is the foundation of civilization. We have contracts, we have agreements, we pay people yeah. so that we have predictability in our economic affairs. It's yeah. very civilized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're welcome to go away and try and enforce that, I'm sure. And I mean, will you? What kind of action will you take then? Yeah, well, that's I mean, something what... we're going to decide as time goes on. Yeah. Are you intending on taking some sort of action in, in terms of the fact that it's been stopped? Well, we will decide that as we go forward. You know, we're in a kind of hurly-burly situation right now. You know, we just got cancelled. We've done a whole lot of successful events in Australia. This is the first time this has happened. So things are a little topsy-turvy right now. Okay. And in terms of that, I mean, your own promoter has said that, you know, um, he feels that powerful forces uh, have got to the owners of tonight's venue. Do, do you guys agree with that? What, what do you think's happened? I don't recall having a promoter, but... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I don't sorry. know where you guys get these terms, but um, so, yeah, sorry, I, I, Carolyn, I Carolyn, it Carolyn, it matter, yeah, yeah, there, yeah, there are certainly individuals that don't want us to be here, and that's demonstrably true. There are individuals within the government that don't want us to be here. There are individuals uh, that are willing, have said they want to attack the event. So powerful forces, whether that means one individual who wants to commit an act of terrorism, which means violence for the for purposes of politics, or an individual who wants to abuse their position of power in government to stop free speech. Yeah, that's powerful forces, I'd say. Yeah, but isn't it more likely that it's more basic than that? That it's just that the venue owner just kind of didn't want you there. You're asking, us, like to, you're, you're, you're asking <laughs> us to th theorize on an unknown, but I think when somebody no, goes, I'm just saying, on, when somebody goes 180 yeah. in the space of one hour, 
usually that's because some other factor has come in yeah, to but influence it, their decision. But it might, but be something, it might be something a lot simpler than... Yeah, he some... might have been beamed up by space aliens and replaced with a replicant. I don't know. We'll theorise. Okay. As, as we... I totally agree with the idea about open inquiry and about how debating ideas has made Western civilizations the best to ever exist. Essentially, free speech is the notion that the best ideas can win not the ideas conceptualized by the one with the gun. And the reason why I've lost faith in a lot of Western countries is because we are losing that free speech. And it's why I'm looking at developments in other parts of the world that are actually becoming very free and peaceful places to live. You see, what used to be the Athenian Democratic Assembly is now YouTube, it's Twitter, it's Facebook, and it's the mainstream media organizations still. These platforms and subsequently these narratives are controlled by people people with political biases. And they seek to cancel the people who challenge the status quo, the people who take on the narratives, the people who ask the tough questions. And much of the time, those are the smart people. And then what you get is these manufactured talking heads that are propped up. People like this journalist and the kind that you see on CNN and Fox that aren't actually capable or worthy of having the kinds of conversations that shape our culture and our society. So a bit of food for thought there, guys, and you can find me below Telegram, Locals, and all my other platforms. Hit those links in the bio. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, you can click right here. If you'd like to watch another video, right here. Till next time, I'm Jake. This is Rattlesnake TV, keeping you armed and dangerous.